So, before I became a hype man for a little skiffle group up the street, I uh, worked at NPR. And three things about working at NPR, working at the mothership in DC. First off, people love NPR. I mean, there, there are those who do not. It's fine. But people, I've never worked somewhere where I met some of you who would say, where do you work? And I say, NPR. And they go, oh my god, I love NPR. And they'd go right into their favorite show or their favorite personality, whatever. The second thing is, you never get over the random hearing of people's voices in the hall, or, or more specifically, standing in line at the cafeteria and hearing Robert Siegel order a roast beef sandwich. It just doesn't... <laughs> random. But the third thing, which is absolutely true, many of us who have worked there, even for short amounts of time, or you know, their whole careers, you meet amazing people who are dedicated, amazing people who are imaginative, amazing people who work so extremely hard to bring you news, information, features, music every day. And some of them become your friends for life. And it is my pleasure to introduce one of mine to you now. Leanne Hansen has made a living with her voice for 35 years. This summer she went off the air when she retired from her position as a host of NPR's Weekend Edition Sunday. She now lives in Bethany Beach, Delaware. She hopes to go on stage for free and do voiceovers for food. And so, to make her comfortable, to give her something she's familiar with, I'm going to say, stand by, open her mic, go. The Facebook picture I present to the world, second grade, seven years old, between the age of innocence and reason, I take tap and door Tony home permanence, sing along to Shirley Temple, I make my first communion at Our Lady of Angels Church. I believe in miracles. At the University of Hartford Drama Department, I expand my mind. My best friend, Linda, we were in the worst play of the 1971 Yale Drama Festival. She's on the radio. Her nickname is Gabby, short for loquacious. I'm known as Angel. My horoscope says I'm going to make a living with my voice. After consciously avoiding radio, it found me. Luck, it said, is the residue of design, or maybe divine. I was born on the feast of the archangels. Gabriel is the messenger, the patron of broadcasting. I'm pregnant in that picture, and there's my daughter Casey sitting on my nana's lap. My nana used to play piano for the silent movies in the theater. Um, I indeed would tap during my lunch hour when I was in England, but I got called back into radio by Terry Gross. She wanted me to host Fresh Air. It had just gone national. The network pricked up its ears and the sound of my voice again, I became the NPR slut, guest host for every show but Car Talk, and then the call came. <laughs> My mom kept this newspaper article on her kitchen wall for more than 20 years. My sister called it her altar to me. I used to call my mom Monday and get her reviews. Will Shorts and I did not have a thing going on, unless you count the Sunday puzzle. Because we were invisible, our voices were sparks that ignited the fire of an idea that for more than 20 years we were having an affair. We're just good friends, but it illustrates the sound, how sound can ignite the imagination. This is Quincy Jones. He knows about sound and imagination. It's one of my few face-to-face -face interviews. You know the old saying, a face made for radio? Well, every time I had my picture taken, I would change my hairstyle. In this one, I am gray when I met this beetle. It was an adolescent dream. He's no teenager, but very youthful. Tap, and I have an affinity for drummers because tap dance is a form of percussion. Ringo was signing my son's photograph. He's a drummer. This is a mosaic from the library in Alexandria, Egypt. His master's voice appears to be ancient. In the desert, there's a community of monks, Benedictine. The first rule of Benedict is listen with the art, with the ear of your heart. And a contemporary Benedictine wrote, Sunday is the day that gives us meaning. This is Um Kulthum's record. Her voice is heard throughout Egypt. And I often traveled this country during elections, and the tidings of eight presidential elections were really full of comfort and joy. The fault lines in America are deeper and more geological, deeper 
and more than geological. Yep, that's Wasilla. <laughs> and she wasn't there. And Tina Fey's voice was echoing in my mind. How's that hopey changey thing working out for you? <laughs> Near the base of Denali, the town of Talkeetna has a small radio station with a pioneer spirit. You know who this is. Tuxedo, fancy dress, congressional correspondence dinner. On the way out, I thought I was having an apparition, but he was real. I walked over and just asked to get my picture taken. Invisibility has its privileges. So does celebrity. Now we know who this is. That's his father on the right. I just went up and asked to have my picture taken with him. You see those earrings, for example? I auctioned them off because they might have some of George Clooney's epithelials on them. <laughs> Because I became a radio personality by accident, I came from a theater background. I was afraid that I was no more than a pretty voice. Like the scarecrow, I wanted a brain, and it turned out I had one. All I needed was a diploma. 439,600 minutes. How do you measure the success of a career? There's no applause in radio, and hospitality is another Benedictine rule. Treat every guest, leave the place better than you found it. This is my daughter Casey, now the age I was when I had her. She inherited my voice. This was taken at the Civic Theater in Allentown. Today she lives in Philly and she works uh, as a stage manager on a, on a production of Cats. She was also a zombie at the Eastern State Penitentiary. <laughs> We've come full circle five generations. My Nana is in the middle. I'm now the age she was when this was taken. I'm also the only one still alive. I've had years of practice being invisible. It helps survive as an older woman. My great-great-grandma Margaret at the end was 102 before she died. Maybe that's what I look like. But for now, this is what I look like. Yeah!